and welcome to the For Her Empire podcast. I'm your host, Abby Moucha. And in this podcast, we address the personal and the business issues that female entrepreneurs face in their day-to-day lives. My guest today is Dr. Caroline. Hi, Caroline. Hi. <laughs> so Dr. Caroline is a female entrepreneur coach. And our topic today is how to establish boundaries for ourselves, our relationships, and our business. So let's... Can you hear this one at the background? The bang, bang, bang. <laughs> Can you hear it? Yeah, your neighbors. <laughs> ah, oh my God. I'm going to figure out how to edit that out. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. Just, well, just let you introduce yourself. <laughs> yeah, yes. Yeah. So I'm a female entrepreneur coach, like Abby said, and my background's in clinical psychology. I specialized in marriage and family therapy. I love the field of psychology. I'm a huge advocate for mental health as well, still. Um, I no longer practice the therapy. I moved more into the coaching space about almost three years ago. September or October will be three years. And I've been loving it. it. My business has kind of morphed into what it is today. And I focus on female entrepreneurs. That were me like a year ago, <laughs> two years ago, where you were re- I was really burnt out and exhausted from trying to do it all. And I think that really is why we're going to be talking about boundaries today because I didn't really know what my boundaries were as an entrepreneur because I just thought you work really hard and you'll be successful. And that's what like my, the work ethic I was filled with as a kid and growing up and that's how I was able to achieve what I did. But I think it's so hard in the entrepreneur space because it never stops. (laughs) You have to really be careful of like what you're saying, what you're doing. Um, that's going to propel you forward and you're not like just running ragged in a way because that's kind of how I felt in the beginning because when you get an opportunity you're like yes 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 and it's like wait a minute <laughs> slow down take a step back what what really resonates right now so I'm so excited to like dive into boundaries because that's what I struggled with and I am excited to talk about it and my clients that it's always like the topic and it just never stops <laughs> but it's cool it's fun stuff <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, I definitely agree that. with the part. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I've, I've seen, yeah, we tend to just like work and work and work and work and then you're dreaming of work. You wake up early in the morning and because when you like go online on Facebook or Instagram. Just tell them, search Alexa, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Alexa's like, I'm <laughs> Oh my god, it's actually Google Assistant. Oh my god, shut up. Who actually does oh. that? It's work less. <laughs> the point of Alexa, right? Yeah. Oh my god. You know, we so much editing to do in this, in this episode. <laughs> like all the background noise. Uh, just, just get a second headset. That's okay. Just in Home case. with the punches. Yeah, yeah. If it gets to bad, I'll just switch to a headphone. <laughs> Yeah. That works for me. <laughs> yeah. So uh, as, as I was saying, like now uh, as female entrepreneurs, like we tend to follow other female entrepreneurs on social media, especially Instagram, um, mm-hmm. like Boss Babe and, and Hustle and, and all that stuff. And then half the content they put out is pretty much indirectly telling you to work till you're, like your soul bleeds out. And we have that idea that working to the point of exhaustion is good work ethic and and you and you mm-hmm. and they indirectly make you feel like if at some point i take 10 hours to sleep i'm lazy apparently like we spend that 10 hours still mm-hmm. working like at what point do you rest like at what point do you go like talk yeah. about something else other than your business <laughs> yeah you're 100 percent right and that's the thing i'm so glad you brought this up because I see it too. I see it all over like hustle. Like you need to be aligned with your hustle, but it's more being in alignment with you and like what makes sense for you. There's going to be some days that, yeah, you have to grind hard versus like other days it's okay. You can take that break, but it's, it comes to balance. And that's like the first topic I talk about with my clients is work-life balance, because if you don't have that and some phases in our lives, it's going to be different balance. So in one phase, it might be it's really focused on business. The next phase, it's business and your relationships because your relationships are understanding of your business and sometimes they're not. So it's really just it's finding your footing and like grounding yourself in that space. Um, I talk a lot about that, just 
for myself and like it's my experiences and I just bring that to the table for my client work ethic but at the same time you really have to understand um what are you grinding towards <laughs> like where's your hustle going towards is it it's working smarter not harder I think yes. that's the biggest like takeaway from what I've experienced yeah. my clients. So you just mentioned the work-life balance and uh, that is surprisingly everywhere on Twitter and LinkedIn. As an entrepreneur, <laughs> what exactly does work-life balance look like since at some point your work becomes like um, a, a, an integral part of your life? So like where's that yeah. balance coming in? <laughs> yeah and I think it's different for everyone because a lot of the entrepreneurs I work with, they're moms and they have like their kids that they have to take care of or newborns or just family dynamics. It's a lot. Um, but I think it's like, it goes back to prioritizing of what's important and everybody's life looks different. And that's the beauty of it. It doesn't have to be one way and it doesn't look one way. And I think that's the misconception of like, well, you have to have it all and you can have it all. Maybe not at the same exact time, but you can be able to navigate that. So if you are able to have work-life balance, sometimes it's, all right, like during the week, it's a little more heavy on the workload and then weekends you have off. Or maybe it's you stop at six o'clock or 6 p.m. and no more work for the rest of the night. Or you take breaks throughout the day. It's maybe if you're a mom, you're playing with your kid for an hour and you have that solid time or maybe it's with your significant other, you're watching a movie and that time is sacred to you guys. So it's just filling in the gaps of what works for your schedule and your life. And I think that's where it's so fun because it is very fluid and it doesn't have to be direct. And as entrepreneurs, we're constantly pivoting. Look at so many entrepreneurs recently have been pivoting so much with their business to more on the online space versus yeah. not. I mean, I started online, but I think it's just being able to be, be transparent of where you're at and how you can shift that. And that's with boundaries. It's never just, okay, this is my boundary for the rest of my life. It's okay. This is my boundary for right now. Sometimes you got to adjust it based off the person, based off of your situation. Okay, that makes sense. So yeah. now I, I sort of get the part about setting setting bounds with your with your relationships in the sense that as you as you're factoring in on your to do list what you want to get done for your business, you're putting that one hour, that two hours to actually spend with your loved ones. So it, so it's not just my business, my business, my business. There's also my kids, my friends, my 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 partner, and, and all of that. So like so on that on that aspect, I I, I understand. But what are setting boundaries for yourself? actually look like yeah you just brought a really good point up um where it's like scheduling blocking off like me time mm -hmm. so prioritizing yourself because one thing that happens a lot is we're not on our own priority list sometimes because we're like so about our business we're so about everybody in our lives and it's what about our health because right now that's been a huge topic i mean health has always been a topic but <laughs> right now more than ever <laughs> yeah yeah all right <laughs> loading up on vitamins um no but being able to really take care of yourself because when you show up as your best self you can show up as your best self for everything in your life your business first and foremost as well as your relationships and your health and those are my three main um priorities of my life and for my clients too and i mean it varies but i think if you're able to at least prioritize you just how much more can you give to the other person like i mean i'm not sure how much you read or like know about like just love in general when you love somebody uh, and sometimes like if it doesn't work out you're like i love them so much yeah, but I if did. you gave so much to that person but imagine when it's the right person so it's kind of like taking that analogy and giving that to yourself imagine if you loved yourself so much that you prioritized yourself how much more you could give to like everything else in your life and people in your life so that's kind of how i look at it because it is difficult and i became very selfish with my time and going back to like what you asked, it's scheduling in that time. Like I'm very firm on like, no, I need to go on my walk. No, I need to meditate. I will call you back. I put my phone on airplane mode um, to really focus in on me. Because if I don't have that time, like people will know. <laughs> because I need that time. <laughs> like my energy, my like flow is off if I don't. Okay. And everyone around me can tell. <laughs> like, like, like a very grumpy person, you're like, Give her an hour. Just give her an hour. <laughs> <laughs> now, like how people get hangry. Like I need to like meditate. That's like my oh. mo. <laughs> yeah. 
So, so what do you do about um, the guilt that comes with taking that time off to yourself? Because now at some point, like, why, why, this is from, from personal experience now, so I don't know if everyone listening to this can relate. But sometimes when you're taking that time off, your brain keeps giving you scenarios of things you could be doing right now. It's like, mm-hmm. so like, so like now I, I've said, that, okay, I'm taking myself out to a restaurant to try this new, this new um, cuisine I saw. The minute I like, take the menu and then I, this, uh, my brain is like, it could be editing an episode right now. It could be writing a new blog post right now. It could be recording a video right now. Like all these scenarios of what I could have been doing, just like get into my head. So that's guilt. How do you manage it? Yeah, that's a great point. Um, That actually happened to me a few weeks ago because like right now you're having more time at home. Mm -hmm. And for me, it was like I was watching a movie with my family and that happened to me. I was like, oh, I could be doing ABC. Yeah, somebody understands. (laughs) No, completely. And I had a client call about this like earlier this week. But I think it's acknowledging, okay, right now it's a priority for me to spend time with my family and business can wait. Like things can wait. It's going to be there tomorrow. It's not like I need it done. It's not a deadline. It's my own deadline. But it's respecting, okay, I need to have that balance because it can't be all business, all work. Is what kind of life is that? That's not the life I'm trying to live. I'm trying to have time for financial freedom and that's the route I've been on. But it really comes down to, okay, understanding these are my beliefs, these are my thoughts and my values, like I'm honoring myself, I'm honoring my relationships and spinning it and reframing it in a way of where, yes, like there's a million things you could be doing, but right now you get to enjoy the cuisine, right? Like the restaurant, the beautiful I know, ambience. I miss sushi so badly. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> so, and that, that's really kind of understanding that and exploring that and just giving yourself that space and time and because the thing is the business will be there, but like your relationships, they can start to sever if you're not really nourish, nourishing them and mm. nurturing them. Yeah. So I had read this quote, um, I, don't, I don't know where I read it, but I think it was a while back or in a book somewhere, something about uh, selfish as a customer or, or something to that, to that, um, that side. So now your, your family, your relationships, when you set out this time and set these boundaries out that I'm going to spend this time with you, but let me spend this time on my business or this, this time with myself, most of them would understand. So now how do you convey these boundaries to your actual paying clients? Yeah, I think it's being able to, like, when you start your sessions, like, before you have anything happen, when they're signing the contract, you set up, these are my boundaries. I'm available, like, at least for my clients, like what I do is um, I have my six week program that I focus on. And in that six weeks, they have like the content I send them and then we have our call. And in between that, if they need me, yes, I'm available. They can email me, but they know my response time is 24 hours. Like if it's an emergency, I'm going to get back to them, but I don't say, okay, I'll respond right away. And I wait to reply as well because one, I might be in the middle of something. I, they're not going to respond right away to me unless it's something they need, right? So and just in anything, I think it's setting that very strategically of like, I'm available, but I'm not going to drop everything I'm doing unless it's an emergency. But I mean, in my coaching clients, it's not really like an extreme emergency as it was. <laughs> yeah, I was about to ask what exactly constitutes an emergency. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, like sometimes like life happens and they just really need me at that moment and like I'm very understanding and I'm going to accommodate but if it's happening like all the time that's a difference if it's once in a while like I'm totally fine with that but I think the former people pleaser in me has like with boundaries it was hard in the beginning yeah. for sure but I, the audience that's listening at least if it is a problem I think it's one time two times okay but when it starts to become a pattern that's when you have to really look at it okay how is my tone when I'm saying it um, how do I show up when I'm expressing and communicating that boundary? So it's very clear. Because if you're like, oh, okay, I can't talk to you right now. Or if it's, I'm sorry, I'm available from two to three. Like, so it's kind of like being very like oh, direct. Yeah. Because if you uh, hear, oh, okay, I'm always available. Or like, oh, she'll bend the rules. Or, oh, it's not a big deal. <laughs> start to take advantage of that. Because I, I've noticed that just from my own personal experiences, like in years higher um, that means such a difference when I do show up differently so I really 
hone in on my tone and what I'm saying and how I'm saying it and the follow up with that like the actions, oh, not okay. like set, setting a boundary and then taking it back. I think there's, a, that happens a lot. Okay. I've seen that. Uh, I, I wanted to ask um, what, uh, what happens when the customer does not respect the boundaries. At the same time, I, I want to know a bit more about um, the tone and how you communicate these boundaries. Um, at least um, for like, if you're a, a people pleaser, um, you might not be, um, how, do I, how do I phrase this? you might not be sure how to convey this um, sort of firmness to your clients without coming up as coming across as rude or standoffish. So I want to ask about how do I present myself? At the same time, I want to know like if your client um, does not fully respect that boundary, what's your next step here? Yeah. Um, so with like the client not respecting, we'll start with that. Okay. With, you have to be, it's case by case, right? So every client's different. It might be a situation they're going through and they might need a little bit more guidance during that time versus other times it's a little bit more, um, it's less frequent. It's not an issue at the moment. Okay. So with my clients, it, it's hard in the beginning. I, I struggled with it, to be quite honest, um, in the beginning because I didn't know where that line was. And I think the more you set the boundaries, the easier it gets. And you're going to have difficult clients sometimes um, not the always, the but you're going <laughs> to, the construction on the background. Oh, oh man. Let, 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 me, let me switch to a headphone. Let's see if that would, that would block out the noise. Okay. Yeah. Because I can hear it so clearly and you can hear it clearly as well. So, yeah. <laughs> Can you hear me? Still not very clear. Barely. Oh. Any better? Yes. Can you hear me now? All right. Okay. All right. Hopefully that will block out the construction noise. Oh. <laughs> All right. Much better. <laughs> All right, so we're talking about uh, setting, setting the boundaries when your, your clients are not exactly respecting it. So what it comes down to when they're not, you need to understand why you have the boundary. So you need to be direct. You don't need to apologize because they think, I've worked with a lot of former people pleasers as well. You still hear and, it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. no, no. You still hear the construction? No, I don't hear it. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> so it goes back to not like stop like apologizing and don't give long explanations and like just be very, okay, this is what happened. Um, when people try to set boundaries, sometimes they're like, you can't do this because da, 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 da. Like they go on like these tangents where it's just like, this is unacceptable because I need you to respect my time just like I respect your time. Just very clear cut. Um, and it comes with time and practice, like practice in front of the mirror. That's like some, a great tip that I learned early on where it makes that confidence too, when it's a difficult conversation, whether it's with clients, whether it's in just life and any relationship, it's really helpful because you can step into your power and you feel like you've flushed out the like little tidbit of, Oh, I don't know what to say. I don't know how to say it. And you're able to take a step back and be like, Nope, this is what I'm saying. This is how I'm going to say it might not come out perfectly and that's okay but at least you have like your bullet points in your head of like what you need to discuss to get your point across effectively and efficiently so that's the other thing another thing when it comes to your tone of when you're talking to your clients it's being calm and polite you're not being harsh you're not being rude and i think there's a misconception with being direct and being rude 
I think it's just, it's not bringing in the feelings. It's more, um, that's more of a therapy side, <laughs> but being able to, on a coaching side, be very um, articulate of, okay, this is what's not working for me. And I need you to understand that. And we both need to come to an agreement and it's working through it. And that's something like as a coach, you're always doing, you're always working through stuff with your client for them to see it in a different perspective that they might've not seen before. It means it's all about perception because if you come across very, it, and it depends on the client you're working with too. If they're more like aggressive you don't want to get more aggressive too you want to meet them in the middle like a common ground uh, no I feel like did you hear me yeah i don't know if it's going through yeah so okay. i'm i'm like if you're aggressive to me my default reaction might be to be like i'm gonna yell at you right now don't push me <laughs> okay you hear me yeah and you know what you just said it. like taking a deep breath before you like say anything, especially if it's the heat of a moment, um, because you don't want to like regret anything you say. You want to be really just assertive. And I think that looks different for everyone. And like I said, it takes practice and it morphs over time. And the more experiences you have where if a boundary is being tested or crossed, you're able to recognize that quicker and sooner because it comes down to awareness. And when we're aware of like what our boundaries are and understand the values, our opinions, our or like things that make us who we are when we feel this uncomfortable feeling I was just talking about this the other day when you feel uncomfortable it's either a sign of growth or something needs to change because it is that uncomfortable spot because it's not a conversation that we have and as kids to be honest as a, like a generalization we're not really taught how to like effectively communicate our feelings and what's going on for us and understanding what boundaries are I mean it's every family's different, but I know like personally it's understanding, okay, it is okay to voice your opinion. It is okay to say, this is not all right and stand up for yourself. And I think when it comes to entrepreneurs, because there's so many, we maybe don't want to say no to a client because like maybe financially we need that money. So we don't want to like piss someone off because then we're worried. <laughs> the financial level. So I think it's just really learning to navigate and understand the client because at the root of it, I think everybody is like, a, there's so much good in everybody. It's just pulling that out. And if a client's being challenged, it's almost like they're, they're uncomfortable with something and they just don't know how to communicate that or express that to navigate that. And that could look similar in other areas of their life. And as a coach, you can be, you're able to point that out okay, okay. in an effective way. At least that's what I do with my Okay, makes sense. Um, on, the, on the other side of having clients who don't understand your boundaries, let's not talk about um, your personal relationships where your partner or your family member do not quite understand the boundaries you're trying to set. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it mm -hmm. froze a bit. So, so um, so let's say oh. um, we have twenty four hours in a day. You sleep for eight, so you have sixteen. Um, so let's say you, let's say you, out of your your working day, you, you plan mm -hmm. spending let's say two hours with your with your friends or your partner or your loved ones, and they feel like you that that you're spending more time on that than on them. So, how do you address that? Mm -hmm. I, I go through this a lot <laughs> personally and with my clients. So I, I think it's, it depends on the other person too, how understanding they are of your business because it's not the norm. Um, a lot of people think nine to five and that's like their focus and there's nothing wrong with that by any means. Um, but as an entrepreneur, it's different. You're not going to an office. Sometimes you're maybe working from home or working from a coffee shop. You're not like going to an office for eight hours. So there's almost like, it depends on who you're dealing with. Like, I mean, I'm very lucky. My family is very supportive, but at times it, it's difficult because I might have a deadline I've created for myself and I need to get something out on like social media or launch something. I have a little bit more time and focus, especially in the beginning of your business, because you're just constantly what we were talking about, like hustling yeah. to like get it up and going. But I think it's, having the conversations with your family and just making it very direct. Like I was saying, when it's okay, I need to make time for my family. 
well, let's watch a movie tonight, or I'm going to eat dinner with you guys tonight, but then I need to get back to work. Or as soon as if, um, because sometimes I'm on my phone a lot because I do all my business from my phone. And if I'm on my phone, I'll like stop, I'll put it to the side or leave it in my room, come eat dinner. And then after dinner, I'll be like, okay, I'm going to go back into like my layer and work. So I kind of make a joke out of it or make it fun. Um, so they know it's not, I'm avoiding them. I'm not ignoring them and not trying to nurture the relationship. I'm really just trying to do both. And I'm one person. I only have a limited amount of time. But I think when you schedule it in or ask ahead of time, like prioritize that, schedule it in, that's the best way to really communicate with family. And when the family doesn't understand, that's a different story too. But when they are understanding and you are able to communicate that, it opens up that awareness for them. It's not, I'm avoiding you. It's not that I don't want to spend time with you. It's just right now, I really need to focus on this because this is going to be a crazy month for me or a crazy like week for me. So I think when you're at least up front, if they still don't respect that, that's another story and you have to work through that and get very creative. And that's, I mean, a lot of my clients have to deal with that sometimes. And that's, it's hard because you want everyone in your life to be supportive of you, but you don't always get that. Yeah. Especially because entrepreneurs want like I said, the norm. It's becoming the norm, so I'm excited to see what unfolds the next few years. <laughs> but I think overall, it's just you have to really be grounded in like what you're doing and know there's a bigger outcome. But I think in the moment, sometimes it's just it's very frustrating. It's remembering though, like take a few deep breaths before you respond. Um, wait to reply if you need to. Give yourself that time and space and energy to understand. Okay, what am I going to say and how am I going to say it? And it's coming from a loving place. It's not, I don't want to talk to you or like, you know, like being rude about or like angry. Like, Stay away me. from me. Back away from me. Uh. Yeah. No, and I think it's just, it's being real too and being authentic. And um, people can tell when it's from a genuine place or an authentic place versus just like, I'm frustrated. I don't even want to talk or even try to deal with this right now. So it, like, it goes back to like what I was talking about with tone. If you're coming from that compassionate place versus like, I just don't want to talk to you. I don't want to spend time with you. Different story. Yeah. So I hope that like kind of answered the question. Yeah, yeah, that did, that did, that did. So were there like a specific um, event that happened in your life that made you realize, okay, uh-uh, I need boundaries right now? <laughs> so many. <laughs> oh my God. Talk no. <laughs> Now, I guess, like, the biggest one was, like, in the beginning, more just with relationships, like, romantic relationships, too, because I think that's a little bit harder than, like, family and friends, just from my perception and other clients, too. Um, you want to spend so much time, especially when you first start seeing somebody, like, you want to spend all that time with them, but at the same time, you have to, like, prioritize your time and... Um, it got to the point where I felt mentally and emotionally drained. I call like some people like energy vampires. Okay. Where... <laughs> um, but, but I'm going to spin it in a positive way. So like when I was able to be aware of, I think part of it is like sometimes when you are such a caring person and giving, and that's like a lot of my clients, they're just always giving and they give so much that there's nothing left for them. And, um, in the dating world, when you're meeting someone, you're hanging out with someone, you're talking to them all the time, you want to, but then they start to um, navigate it in a way where you don't have any time for yourself, like going to the gym or just being outdoors. Like those are two of my main things. Like I started losing that time. I felt my skin breaking out. I felt like I was losing too much weight from stress. And like this was a couple of years ago and really being able to understand all these points in my life where it kind of felt like I was had this weight on my shoulders. I was like carrying the weight. And that's when I realized too, I can't keep doing this. Like something needs to shift. And this was actually in the beginning of my coaching business and I was trying to do it all. And I realized that if I didn't set boundaries and I had gone to like therapy and every therapist has a therapist, um, but in the past, <laughs> but being able to realize and recognize okay, I'm being taken advantage of for my like emotional energy. There's no emotional energy left for myself, for my friends, for my family. Like, and if there is, I'm just like exhausted every single day. So I think it started to show up physically, mentally, and emotionally. 
and I went to the burnout stage yeah. and learning to unfold that and seeing, okay, well, you're giving to everybody else. What, what are you giving to yourself? How are you making time for yourself? And that's when I realized, oh, you need to prioritize your top three things of your life. You need to take that, schedule that me time because if it wasn't scheduled, it didn't happen. That's how like my life was. And I'm not sure if you can relate or anyone else listening can relate. Oh, I but do, I think it's- I do, I have like an, an attack table that tells me at 6 a.m. wake up, do your yoga, do exercise, meditate, seven to eight, do this, eight to nine, do this, nine to 12. I have like the entire day planned out. Then I have like my to-do list of daily tasks. So I, I always know what what needs to get done on this day yeah and so see like with you you're able to understand okay this is my time blocks this is where i have free time and i think like especially in the beginning i was just like always working it was like 18 19 hour days and it was insane that's not normal and that's not sustainable so now like i have like two days where i fluctuate a little bit more i have more open space and i purposely do that i don't like schedule anything if something comes up great if it doesn't i can maybe work on something i can maybe like do what i need to do but i have more flexibility within like because i was very rigid before i guess you could say because i needed to get things done and yeah, i yeah, wanted yeah. to do all this it stuff. makes sense but like, yeah. your first yeah. year you're, you're so swapped which doesn't make sense because you barely have that much clients to, to warrant all that effort anyway. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. No, you're exactly right. And that's the hard part. I think it, it's just, there's so many learning curves too. And I think with boundaries, the beautiful thing is they're always evolving and they're not rigid. I think some people, like people that really need you to set their like boundaries for them, start to respect you even more too because they realize how valuable your time is your energy and like i mean a perfect example is sometimes when people cancel plans like it's like all right whatever not a big deal but like if it's somebody you're interested in or dating or like people that like you don't really know yet but you're learning to know and it's like a disrespect to your boundary but they don't know unless you communicate that to them yeah. as well like okay you know like my time is valuable so is yours but next time can you plan like, let me know so I have that availability if I can yeah. put something else in there. Because as an entrepreneur, you don't really have time to just like, okay, no big deal. <laughs> that was an hour of my time. But I, I think it's, um, I've been learning that a lot with some of my clients recently that it's been a theme that's been coming up. Oh. So it's cool to address it and be able to be like, oh, wait a minute. How are you setting your boundaries? What's your tone like? What are you communicating to them? No, I have a question. So, like, if you this is somebody, you're like, you're telling them that if you have a date going on next week, are you going to cancel? Tell me three days in advance. That kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can. You totally can. I think, too, it's just like, right? Like, I have a good friend that's a relationship coach. Um, she's awesome. And we had a discussion because we're working on some stuff together. And she's always like, you always confirm the date, like, a day before or, like, just to make sure. Like, for me, I always have something, like, backed up of, like, okay, I need to, like, get something done for my Instagram or, like, business stuff or my program or a client. So I always have something in the back burner because there's always so much to do. So it doesn't make a big difference for me. But, like, for a lot of my clients, too, I'm like, well, you know, just confirm. Just make sure, like, let them know, like, up front, like, this is the time space I have. Like even like, okay, I'm free from Saturday to two to three. And they're like, okay, perfect. Book it. And then the day before it's like, oh, hey, I'm really looking forward to tomorrow at two. So you're like, you're putting it out there. I'm not a relationship coach, but you know, it's just, it's like with setting your boundary. That's like a prime example of being able to be like, all right, this is my time block. This is when we're going to spend time together. I'm looking forward to it. And then yet yeah, you're still respecting and honoring yourself because they can be like, oh my God, I'm sorry. I have to cancel or reschedule or anything along those lines. Oh. But sometimes sometimes even after um, you you notify them a day in advance, sometimes life is kind of unexpected and that situations might, might happen. Mm -hmm. Maybe they might have a work emergency or a family emergency and then they have to cancel and now you're just sitting here feeling frustrated. You're like, I planned out this time and then all of a sudden I have one hour free time. She just told me earlier. <laughs> 
Yes. No. And that, that's a great example because life does happen and it's not being so rigid. There's under, like, obviously there's, life is going to happen and it's being understanding. And I mean, if they can, it's one thing if they don't communicate and just leave me in the dark versus like, just being like, Hey, I'm so sorry this happened. Cause that's happened to me all the time. I'm like, okay, no worries. Like, let me know if you want to reschedule. Not a big deal. Whether it's like something romantic, whether it's a friend, whether it's a work situation, whatever it is, I think it's just, it comes down to communicating and that's how we're able to set, like effectively set boundaries when we communicate what our needs are and what our wants are. Thank you. And then. <laughs> so now you've mentioned two major points. One is communicating the boundaries. The second is um, scheduling it into time blocks because if, if, it, if it's not scheduled, um, it's, it, it does not get done. It's something like that. So apart from communicating and scheduling things, uh, do you have any other actionable tips that we can implement to really set those boundaries? Yeah, so scheduling it, um, learning to say no. That's a big part, like say no to something so that you can say yes to yourself. I mean, it's in books, it's on podcasts, it's everywhere. And like, I've actually implemented that so much. Like it's my favorite word now. He's like, no, I can't. <laughs> No, <laughs> exactly. Um, but you have that choice. And that's, I think, the great spot as well. And like when we are being able to communicate or decide what we need to do, I think the other aspect is, I mentioned this earlier too, but like delay your response. Because sometimes when we say, oh, yes, that's a great opportunity. It's like, wait a few minutes to respond. Or if it's something that's not like a yes, like a high, high yes, then like just reevaluate that. And do you have time for it? Is it something that you want to make time for? Whether it's business, whether it's pleasure, whatever it is in our lives, but trusting ourselves too. And then um, knowing the implications of saying yes. So the more you say yes, the further you drift from your vision. So you might have this vision for your business. And if you keep saying yes to other things that are outside of your business and you don't have that balance of, working and life that could start to implicate it and com be complex, um, complicated. Couldn't think of the word. <laughs> um, and then keeping it simple is another thing too. Like you don't owe anybody explanations of like why you're doing your business, why you're so focused, um, why you're saying no. Like you can, obviously it depends on the person and stuff, yeah, but you don't need to have to convey like long. Yeah. Because, you know, there is a saying too, and I've experienced this, where sometimes people are like bending the truth or don't want to do something. They'll like write this like paragraph where you could have just been like, no, I'm sorry, I can't do it. Or, I can't make it. Like, simple. Just keep it simple. <laughs> if they ask questions and you feel comfortable answering them, go ahead. But like at the end of the day, like this is your life and owning that. Um, and then make yourself less um, accessible. So what I was talking about earlier too, I think when we're able to set clear boundaries with clients, family, friends, significant others, um, being able to know, okay, this is my free time. So like, for instance, for me, Saturdays are kind of like my day off and I can do whatever I want and I don't have like anything like set and scheduled every single week at this point. So I have more flexibility in my schedule. I make sure I do things with my family. Um, I've been a little bit better about that. So that's another tip. The other, I have one more. Um, it's just being able to honor the no too. So I think it, like a lot of the one I'm talking about with communication and boundaries, it's like trusting yourself, honoring yourself and respecting yourself when it comes to responding to whatever it is on the other side. So whether it's an opportunity, whether it's a date, whether it's time with your significant other, whether it's going on a walk with your family, playing a game, whatever it may be, just really honoring your decision and the guilt, like what we were talking about in the beginning is taking the guilt out. Like you're always going to have something to do for your business, always, yeah. if you're growing and evolving. So respect that space, understand that space, but know it will get done. Maybe not right the second, but it is, is it really going to make a difference if you can tonight or tomorrow? unless you have a firm deadline. So like having more space for yourself and energy and being realistic, being realistic of what your expectations are and your time. Because sometimes I'll be like, okay, I'm blocking off 30 minutes a day and it takes me two hours. So it's like, you know, it's sometimes you have to kind of adjust. You have to be really flexible. And as an entrepreneur, that's one of the qualities 
we really possess is being able to like move with the market, move with what is happening and pivoting. So those are my little quick tips <laughs> for that. Okay, so um, there is this saying here in, uh, in Kenya, at least that's, mm -hmm. that, that's the first time I, I heard it. Um, it was that when a customer comes to you with a request, do not say no, say yes. And if you cannot do it, uh, after you say yes, learn how to do it. Mm -hmm. Yes, I think, um, I want to say Richard Branson. I'm totally probably wrong, but... I think believe he said something similar to that in that context yeah. because it is true. when there are opportunities, if it seems like something like you're really interested in, if it's just, you're saying yes to everything and it has no, um, like it doesn't align with your business. Okay. That's a different story. But what you're talking about, I think is very valuable because it is like just figuring out after, like there's a lot of things that I have experienced where I'm like, yes. I'm like, what do I do? Google, <laughs> how do I do this? or figure it out or ask somebody or having a mentor to being able to help you through. But I love that because I think it's so spot on and what people do need to hear it too, because it, it is about the yeses that are going to further you along to what you ultimately want is we're not doing this because we're being forced into it. We're doing it because we love it and we're passionate about what our business is and what we're doing with it and the people that we're reaching and touching and making an impact because that's what you're doing on your podcast. You're making such an impact for all these entrepreneurs and individuals <laughs> that are listening. And that's the beauty of it, right? And I think that's when it comes to understanding our boundaries, your boundaries are probably, I'm going to open up this space and really, and I don't want to speak for you, but I'm saying like from my perspective, like opening up to really reach those people that need to hear your voice and who you're interviewing at the time and what you have to say, because there's value in that. Yes. yes virtue. Yes. Yay. <laughs> so um, I used to do this thing um, where um, when someone uh, how, how do I phrase it it's like double booking but like somebody asks, asks you to do something or to show up for an event or to get a particular task done and then you just say yes to all of them and there might be some conflicting times but you're, at, at the back of your mind you are like when the time comes I will, I will shut it out mm. Yeah, that's hard. So let me just make sure I understood that question. So like you have two things going on, mm -hmm. your mind is going, but like you're focused on what you're doing, but in the back of your mind, you have the other thing going on, oh, right? Is that what you're like, um, someone, somebody, someone's like, Hey, Abby, um, could you, could you do this task for me? Or can you, um, help me teach my client this? Or can you help me edit this? And then so you have like several tasks people have requested you to do um, maybe so several um, paying tasks and then so several of them maybe one or two of them are kind of clashing time wise and then so okay. so your, your thought is that at when that time comes I'll figure something out <laughs> oh that that is hard um <laughs> I think it depends on the opportunity it depends on who's asking you and how you can maybe shift the time so if it's like two speaking engagements, yeah, you can't speak at the same exact time. Granted, you have to choose one. Yeah. Um, so that's really difficult if you want to do both. Sometimes that has happened to me and I ask, it depends on like, maybe I have a client call and then like an opportunity. I'll ask my client. It's a little bit easier in that way to be like, Hey, can we change it to this time? Or when are you available? I'll put it more on them. So they have that flexibility because I'm changing the time. Versus if they're changing the time, it's a little bit harder. So like when you do have two tasks, it's communicating with both people and seeing if you can change the time frame and what it is, like in the weight of that opportunity. So that is difficult, but it's just, it's kind of trusting yourself of what, which one you want to go, which route is going to really propel you forward. Maybe both of them are, yeah. and you're forced to decide. Yeah. And it's like decision fatigue sometimes. The, like that's a like, real like last minute cancellation you're like yeah i thought they would cancel but they did not so sorry <laughs> yeah no i mean sometimes it's better to be double booked than not be booked at all but i think like it's picking and choosing and just i think it's really trusting yourself and trusting your gut like and coming and it always is like coming off from an authentic place and a genuine place and people are understanding i think that's the misconception too like sometimes 
They're like, I don't want to like make them upset or think I'm not interested yeah. or I don't want to do it. I just can't do it at this moment. Or like, can we reschedule? Is there a way to like work around that and working together instead of, because sometimes when we like have all these conceptions in our head of like, they're not going to be able to, or we have a whole dialogue. When the dialogue doesn't really exist with the person if you just talk to them and communicate. And that's what it goes back to like when we we're talking about the communication, mm-hmm. just being very clear and concise because when we are able to fully communicate, it makes everything easier. There's no questions. It's not in the gray area. It's black and white. Like this is what it is. <laughs> you can see very clearly versus when we're in that gray area of not knowing, it just like festers inside of us. Oh, makes sense, makes sense. So um, are there any misconceptions that, that um, your clients have had or you personally have had about setting boundaries? Like I could think of one um, for, I guess, sometimes when you try to set boundaries with your friends, um, they sort of take it as, as you no longer have time for them anymore. Like you, so you feel like you're, like you're at this particular level where you cannot connect with them anymore. So are there some other misconceptions that you've realized when you try to set boundaries? Yes. So, uh, like, sorry for the background. No, I didn't um, hear it. <laughs> okay. So I, for, when it comes to our friends, like I had this experience, like I would say over maybe five years ago now, maybe six. When I was really setting effective boundaries with friends, because I was always just like, like I was mentioning earlier, giving, giving. Yeah. When I was able to stop giving so much, my friends felt that shift. They're like, wait a minute, I'm used to like you always being there, you being so available, or whatever it was. And they had a shift to those new boundaries, but I had a shift to them shifting. So it, like they were open to it, and it was just shifting the dynamic of the relationship. They were able to morph with that because they were like my true core friends and they still are today so it, it's cool to see that that's not the case for everyone because sometimes when like what you're saying you up level in life in your business and you're evolving changing what you felt before is not what you feel anymore because of like what you're reading what you're listening to who you're interacting with outside of like your core group of friends um it is going to shift you are going to kind of lose friends along the way and that's sad and upsetting but also like your mindset isn't the same and you can have friends that have different mindsets and you just don't hang out with them as as much as you used to because you also I think for me I love having a diverse group of friends like from different places and points in my life and I still do but there's some people that just didn't respect my boundaries and they're no longer in my life because I had to decide am I going to continue to allow this or tolerate it no so it's not going to be in my life. If they were able to change along with me and giving them time and space to do so, they're still in my life today. And that's the same thing I install with my clients. Because <laughs> it's important. We've got to love ourselves and love like the community we built for it, build for ourselves. Is this important? Yeah. So um, if, the, if the people in your life are not willing to adjust to um, how you how you are growing, how you are changing, how you are adapting, then you might have to evaluate that relationship and decide. Okay, I might have to drop this, which cannot be a fun like um, talk to have. You're like, so Ashley, yeah, about that. Mm-hmm. Can't be friends anymore. <laughs> yeah, and I think it's a deeper conversation too. And like sometimes, you know, because like. In like, for instance, it's called ghosting, right? Like dating, like you stop talking and it just changes. I feel like it's kind of the same thing with friends in a way. Like some people do that. For me, I think like in the beginning when I was learning how to set like effective boundaries, it was more of a ghosting thing. I learned along the way of how to be like more communicative and like very clear. And that's what like is fun to teach my clients now because of my experiences (laughs) to be real and raw with you. But I think for when it comes to like talking to your friends, it's giving them that time and space to do so, to adjust to your new boundaries, to adjust to, okay, this isn't how this is going to work anymore. It's a new normal for like how you interact in that friendship. And people grow, like some people come in and out of your life, like depending on also what's going on with their life. It's not just about you too. It's like they might really love you and care about you, but like they are going through something really hard right now and 
you can't be there for them and they can't be there for you and you go your separate ways for a little bit and then come back together and that's like with relationships they're always evolving and changing and shifting because we're humans <laughs> like we have so many different things going on like the human mind is fascinating to me and um being able to study that as well in school but i think like seeing it day to day you have to pick and choose and it's trusting that you're making a decision that you feel is right in the moment it might not be right later on but it's about progress you live you learn we all make mistakes we all grow from those mistakes and it's also sometimes people come into your life for a very valuable lesson and then they leave and you still hold that person of like wow they really taught me a b c and d about myself and about my relationships about my friendships and sometimes it's family. Like I've experienced that with a lot of my clients recently of how you interact with your family when you're up leveling and they're not respecting your boundaries. You can't just like, Hey, bye. <laughs> no, because you, yeah. they're your family. <laughs> I love my family. Um, it's hard sometimes because you know, different personalities, different dynamics. But I think at the end of the day, they want to, they love you. They care about you but it's adjusting to that. And that's more like, if you need professional help, go see a therapist on that level. But I think when it comes to just boundaries in general and being able to know that they're gonna shift. As you shift, your boundaries are gonna shift. Yeah. It's a process. It's never like set in stone. That's the fun part. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. Oof, we've talked for a while. Um, is there yeah. any, any, um, <laughs> any question I should have asked or, or any topic? Um, wanted to speak about. Yeah, Stop I mean, I, something outside. Can't you wait a few hours for me, damn it? <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I think it's just really understanding too, um, like what's healthy and what's not healthy for you when it comes to boundaries. That's the biggest thing. Is when you can identify that, you can really set effective boundaries and communicate them because you know what's right and what's wrong for you. Because everyone's different. Yeah. So I think that's the only other thing I wanted to talk about when it comes to boundaries. I mean, I could talk for hours about boundaries, but the main things I think is just being really clear, communicate, and just respect yourself. Because when you respect yourself and honor yourself, that is going to translate to your relationships okay. and your business, first and foremost. <laughs> okay, so uh, if someone wants to um, work with you or to learn more about how you can help them set boundaries, how can they contact you? How can they learn more about, you know, your services? Yeah, I mean, I'm very active on Instagram, so you can just find me. My handle is Dr. Caroline Eskovitz. Find you right uh -huh. <laughs> Perfect. And um, my website is just www.drcarolineiskovitz.com, all one word. Oh, so you can no, that just spell the last name so it's for them. Call <laughs> with me. Um, yes, doctor, and then Caroline, C A R O L I N E, and then Iskovitz, I S C O, V as in Victor, I T Z. Let's found you. Ooh, that's you. Yes. <laughs> you went like running. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> very active outside. Oh, yeah, no, so um, people can... therapy. Nice. Yeah. You go, girl. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. It was nice talking to you with all the construction noise at the back. Oh, good. Oh, you're fine. You're fine. It was so great connecting with you. I love, like, learning about you, and you had such great questions. Thank you. I'm excited to stay connected. Oh, you said? You said I'm excited to stay connected. Me too.